So what is the benefit? So why prepay matters? We want to increase the confidence and self-control in, in academic vocabulary. We want to increase the focus and memory skills of our students. And we want to build lifelong thinkers and most importantly, strong problem-solving skills because we over the last few years have had to problem-solve a few skills. We're still trying to problem-solve those skills, I would think. Okay, so here's the main, I think the most important slide that we're going to talk about. We're going to give you all the information, but this is the main one that I want you to remember. So, what, what are the academies, the regular early learning pre-K, the STEAM, and the dual language? Then, what is the location of those? So, the early learning pre-K centers will be, there will be a wing at the New Country Elementary that they're building. There will be a wing at the New San Jacinto Elementary. And there will be a wing right behind Sterling High School that is in the process of getting a name. In fact, last night at the board meeting, we had about a dozen or so people stand up and talk about who they would like to name that academy. So for right now, we have a generic name of Central. So Central, Humphrey and St. Jacinta. For the STEAM Academy, there are only 88 seats for that academy. Two classrooms at Stephen F. Austin and two classrooms at Victoria Walker. And then the Dual Language Academy will be started at Alamo, at Asheville Smith, and at Harlem. So those are the locations. So if you qualify, are you available to go to those? Yes. If you don't qualify, which ones are available for tuition? What we did is we tried to say, what will at least neutralize the cost of a certified teacher in the Paris, but what will be less than what this community would have to pay for the best of the best daycare? So we came up with a $500 a month option, which is way cheaper than most. We're going to try to do that. We have not figured out exactly what platform we are to use, but it is community-based. You do not have to be an employee to reap this benefit. And then the dual language, same thing, $500 a month. So I hope that's exciting because I don't know, but my youngest kid is 20 and I pay way more than $500 a kid during my uh, daycare days. And then what's required? We have a student observation inventory that will be required for the STEAM and the Dual Language Academy to make sure that we have the executive functions to be able to go into those programs. And then, is there a language criteria? For the Dual Language, we'll be looking for fluent English and Spanish speaking students to go in a classroom together and they will be biliteracy. We're really focusing on biliteracy and you're going to get a lot of information about that. Qualifications. Where is Araceli De La Cruz? Araceli is the queen of all things qualifications. So this is a snapshot of the qualifications that you'll see. But she's going to go through this, and I'm going to pass this, this slide to her to just kind of sum up what some of the qualifications are for free pre k and then from there, we're going to turn it over to Christy Lackey, who is our coordinator for early childhood. And then I want to introduce my team before we go on. Uh, director of elementary is Olivia Callahan. Our director of bilingual is Dr. Clark Moreno. This is Michael Juarez. He is our guru of all things special ed and early childhood. And then also, uh, Kevin Robleski is our district associate director for science. And I believe we are missing a few more. Thomas is over here. Uh, our executive director for some of our elementary schools you met when you walked in is Karen Thomas. And you'll meet probably a few more as we go through. Um, I like to think that I have a, a loud voice that projects. So if you can't hear me in the back or if I need to be louder, just raise your hand. Thumbs up if you can hear me. But great, thank you. Uh, now, these qualifications are not Goose Creek specific. These are set by the federal government. Okay? This is not specific to Texas, Goose Creek. This criteria is set by
by the federal government. Um, and our office is over the qualification process. Uh, these are the areas that you could qualify for free pre-K. Okay, so one of the first ones is um, if your child is limited English proficient. Okay, there's limited English skills there, that's an area of qualification. Um, if you're edu economically disadvantaged, um, if you receive a uh, SNAP, uh, depending on the number of individuals in your house and the amount of the overall income. Okay, so if I live with my grandparents and they get SSI and it's only me and my daughter and I work full time, I may not qualify. Okay, it's based on the number of individuals in your household and the overall income. Um, if your family has uh, suffered a loss of their house, if you are homeless or someone that's not stable or adequate, if your child um, is the dependent of an active duty member of the armed services for the United States, if they're in the military, um, if your child is part of the foster care system, if let's say I'm raising um, a family member, I'm raising my niece who got placed with me uh, because of some issues, okay, should be eligible for free pre k If it ever been in the foster care system, they're eligible for free pre k Or if the person uh, is a recipient of the Star of Texas Award, or if their family member was ever injured in military, then they would be eligible for free pre k uh, these are very specific guidelines and that come with very specific documentation. And so if you have any questions on what that looks like, you can find our contact information under Student Services on the main Boots Creek page. Okay, you go under Department, Student Services, there's three numbers available with three emails. If you have a question and you're not sure um, if you're a child or you're dependent qualified, please feel free to email us or reach out to us and we're available from 7.30 to 4.30. And then I will be available after the presentation should you have any more questions. I'll turn it over to you. Bye. So we're going to talk about the Early Learning Academy first. And that's at those three locations, the one at Central that doesn't have a name yet, the one at Humphrey, and the one at San Jacinto. And these are amazing academies because this is a partnership with Fueling Brains. In this partnership, we're helping our students to use this research-based approach to provide those pre-k skills that they need to grow their brains and their bodies to become learners. We're not teaching them what to learn, we're teaching them how to learn. So how are we gonna do that in the academies? How are we gonna teach these students how to learn? We're gonna go through left brain, right brain, and movement lessons. So the pre students in their pre-k early learning academies will go through left brain, where work is play. That's more structure. It's more organized. It's where students are following what the teacher is asking them to do. They're building their structure, calmness, their attention focus. So they're building some of those executive functionings that we need in the left brain. Then in the right brain classroom, they're going to be working collaboratively. They're creating, they're doing student exploration, led through themes that we're going to look at. So they're going through a left brain half a day, a right brain half a day, and then they'll have movement lessons. Because when movement is involved and students are using actively their brain and they're learning at the same time, those little neurons are firing in their brain and they're building more neurons and more growth for brain development. So we're teaching them how to learn in that left brain, right brain, and movement. This is a worksheet-free environment. So the students are coming home with packets every day. We're gonna be immersing them in 12 to 16 unique experiences. And they're very unique because they're connected and they're beautiful. You'll see those in just a minute. So it's kind of hard to read that green up there, I apologize. But we have Discover, Connect, and Explore, the three big ideas for the Early Learning Academy. And some of those unique experiences are like the Here We Grow, Our World, World Culture, Marvelous Me, On the Road, Space City. So let me show you what those look like. So you can see in the top left corner, that is our Gulf Coast room. 
It's a museum quality room where the students are immersed. So for two to three weeks, they would be spending a half a day in the Gulf Coast room. That Gulf Coast room, you can see the picture, it actually has the chemo boardwalk behind it. The students in that left brain classroom, they were in there for left brain, they would be doing structured activities. They'd be working on their concentration. If they were in there with their right brain teacher, they would be following interest-led discoveries and developing projects around the Gulf Coast. On the top right, you can see that's the pet vet. They're learning how to care for animals, so they're learning about the vocabulary, the theme ideas, about taking care of pets in their home or around their homes, but at the same time, we're building their executive functioning. On the bottom left, that's the build zone. So you can see that it's surrounding construction in this museum quality rooms. On the bottom right, it's wild animals. So students would spend two to three weeks with a left brain teacher in a theme and a right brain teacher in another connected theme without worksheets so they can build their concentration, their executive functionings of inhibitory control, which is making sure that I don't get tempted. I can like, manage myself and my inhibitory control. My behavior is better okay. It's kind of like when you're going to the refrigerator and you want a cookie and you're like, I don't need that cookie. You're practicing your own inhibitory control. We're also building working memory. When we think about working memory, it's moving things. It's how much can I remember and how can I use that in my working memory. And we're also working on cognitive flexibility. Taking what I learned in one place and using it someplace else. How to become a problem solver. When students have built that executive functioning, then they're able to continue learning on their own and we can continue to teach them what they need to know in kindergarten and beyond. Does that make sense? And aren't those beautiful? Let me show you a couple more. Up in the top left is our world, showing the world all around us. So you can see in every room there is an interactive area, there's room for circle time, there'll be read alouds, they'll have math activities, but they'll also be learning how to control themselves, how to concentrate, how to collaborate with friends, how to create new projects. So for instance, in the top right one, that's the Space City. This year, some of our students that run our pilot campus, they actually built a rocket out of boxes when they were doing their creative project. They became astronauts in the right brain lens of that. In the left brain, they were reading books such as Aeronautics for Pre-K, and they were learning the vocabulary associated with it in the space city. On the bottom left is another sample of one of these 12 to 16 rooms. That is the Here We Grow, and there is a growth, a hydroponics table. They'll be thinking about how all of the things grow, what we need for things to grow in our environment. And on the bottom right, that's the rainforest. So these are all different environments where we're helping our students grow in that two to three weeks through group and individualized lessons where they're building that executive functioning. Aren't those beautiful looking rooms? Kids are very excited about them. So now we'll talk about dual language. Thank you, Christine. Okay, good evening, everybody. When I start this, I'm going to collaborate and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the dual language free academy for this year. So what is the dual language two-way program or dual immersion program? It's basically a program, an enrichment program uh, that combines native English speakers and Spanish native speakers in the same classroom. So the goal is to promote the second language acquisition started in pre k high academic achievement in both languages and cross-cultural understanding. And it, this dual language program academy is going to be offered, like uh, Ms. Jackson said, at Alamo, Ashford Smith, and Harlem Elementary schools. Why do we want to implement a dual language academy starting in pre -K? What do you notice at the top of that chart? What do you notice? High academic achievement for districts who really implement that implement effectively this program, we obtain high academic levels of uh, high levels of academic achievement. You can see the two-way program model is the one that we want to start implementing as early as quickly. We already have this program in kinder, first, 
Second, we're moving it up one grade level at a time. We are now adding pre into the equation because we believe this is what's best for kids. So the goal of the dual language program is to promote bilingualism, biliteracy, and bicultural uh, understanding among all of our students. All core areas are going to be taught in English and in Spanish. So the students are really too immersed in the language. The language is a means to the content. Okay? So the program starts in pre-grade and then continues through the elementary years with the goal and the intent of expanding into secondary schools. The beautiful thing about the dual language program in the state of Texas is that if the students complete primary education in a dual language program, they can obtain after fifth grade a credit of foreign language for high school already. So that's pretty amazing. Another thing that we promote in the dual language program is uh, a lot of parental involvement. And by that I mean you're going to be engaged because you're going to come to school uh, intentionally twice a year to engage in a student-led conferences where your students, your children are going to be able to showcase everything they have been learning, their bilingual trajectories in two languages, the math, the science, the language arts, in two languages. And that's a great need experience for parents to see as the students are acquiring everything in two languages. Okay? It's getting complex here. Hi, good evening. My name is Kevin Robleski. I'm the Associate Director for Science, and we're going to talk about STEAM. So STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. So we're going to house this at Austin Walker. This is going to be a pilot program this year. And as uh, Ms. Jackson mentioned earlier, there are 88 spots. There will be 44 spots at each one of these locations. And what is the STEAM Pre-K Academy? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be immersing students in hands-on activities in all of these five areas. So we'll also, in addition to that, we're going to have monthly field experiences where they're going to be going out to different field trips. And I've got a little chart to kind of show you the little experiences that we're talking about. And we're also going to have outreach programs coming in to the district to work with the kiddos. So what we're doing here with STEAM is we're preparing kiddos for jobs uh, that don't exist yet. So in 15 years, there's going to be jobs that we have no clue that are going to be happening. So if we dial this back 15 years back, uh, in 2007, the iPhone was out, right? They dropped the iPhone in 2007, and they had something called the touchscreen, which we have no clue what that was. I mean, we were amazed, right? That is some amazing technology. And we also had apps. Well, the person that's working on the touchscreen and develops that is not the same student, the same kiddo that's working on the apps. One's a coding job, one's some of the, uh, part of a design job, or a technology that they're not associated with each other, but we're trying to reach both those learners. We're also, you also look at the iPhone that came out, remember the sleep design? That's a whole entire different person. That's somebody who's doing engineering design, trying to make something to, to look nice. And then you can take it another step further. Do you remember when you got the iPhones? What did it come in? That box. Do you remember getting that box for the first time? How many people kept the box? Anybody? How many people have a box sitting in the closet somewhere, right? And you were like, well, I can't get rid of this box. Well, that's a whole other student that designed that. So we're already talking about four different students, right? And then lastly, you have you have somebody who, who worked on the artwork on the box, right? So all five of those students, we want to reach all of them. And sometimes those students don't know those the, those talents that they have, and we're trying to make sure that we encompass that. So the STEAM program is going to, it's not what we're used to, we're used to kind of a layered instruction where you're te teaching different core standards one at a time, this is more of a grade instruction. We're going to encompass all of the core standards and intertwine them together, so that way we're getting back and forth so that students are learning all the standards in the way that they learn them. And that's also going to be graded with the uh, field of grades model. So this is kind of like on top of what we're doing with the other two academies. So to give you kind of like an idea of what the things that we have, 
Ninja here, I know that the, it's, it's kind of light, but I'll kind of read some of them off. But what we have is the left brain stem and the right brain arts, and then on the furthest right kind of column, I guess, those are the experiences, possible experiences that we're thinking about sending the students out to, or the outreach programs that we're going to use. So we have physics, which is sound and energy. We're going to accompany that for the first thing with vocal music. So what we did is we took science and STEM uh, focus curriculum and we're intertwining them throughout the theme. So there's eight themes here. We would do that in a monthly process. And then you kind of got a list down. We have physics, light, energy that goes with art. We have anatomy that kind of goes with classical dance. And then technology that's going to go with instrumental music. We have computer science that goes with digital art. Uh, we are bringing in a uh, robotics program that is tailored to pre-K students. Also, we're looking into virtual reality programs and also coding programs that are tailored to four-year-olds. So this right here this is very exciting and we can't wait to get started. Okay, so um, before I turn it over, I want to introduce a couple of key people to you. Michael Morris, if you have any, any, Michael, do you want to say anything? He is our guru of ECSE, Early Childhood Special Ed. Good evening. Um, right now, some of your students may, or their children might get students, but they may be in the ECI process. Um, when we do test at Goose Creek in the special education department, we bridge in through our ECSE programs for students that may be in ECI, uh, Early Childhood Intervention. Uh, two names I'm going to give, and I have a handful that's also with some more information, are Nisha Jones and Angel Juarez. Uh, they are over child find and assessment. If you have any questions, please contact the Special Education Department. If there are any specific things that you'd like to uh, ask me after the presentation, please, please feel free, and I hope we will be able to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to introduce a special guest of this night. You've heard a lot about fueling brains. Well, what is fueling brains? So normally when you go to a, a campus, you hear about a bought curriculum. Okay, we bought into Pearson, um, Holtland Biffin, um, Frog Street, y'all all Camco, and around, you've heard it all. So fueling brains is not a purchased, bought curriculum. There is not promise you, not one worksheet involved. This is a brain-based research that is about early childhood development that really looks at research-based instructional practices. Goose Creek decided that our early childhood students needed the best of the best. We, we, as a school system across the state and across the nation, we invest a lot of money in high school programs. Welding, STEM academies, fine arts academies, global business academy here. All of these things, but what are we really doing to really invest in the future of our children at our early childhood? Because we know they learn the fastest and the best. That's where we really, really change the world, I think. So Dr. Anil Kareem is the um, brains behind Feeling Brains, and he's here with us tonight. I'm going to share something, Dr. Kareem. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to let all the parents know that uh, this actually is a vision by Dr. Brian, the superintendent at Goose Creek, where he wanted to bring the best in the world to Goose Creek when it came to early childhood education. Um, I've architected and designed some of the best uh, world's early childhood programs based on developing young brains. And for the children that I get to see out here that go to these programs, you um, should be really proud to be a part of Goose Creek. If I had a child at that age, I would be at Goose Creek because you are getting a world-class education where people around the world might pay two, three, four thousand dollars a month for this program, and you're getting it for you know very little to free. And this is something that's going to be life-changing for you because in early childhood education, 90% of your child's brain is developed by five years old. And 80% is developed by three years old. So we all are giving experiences to our young children. 
but Goose Creek is going to take the time to give the experiences systematically to your children so that they can build their entire brain capacity. And hopefully, these children that go through this program are going to be the next leaders of this city and this town. And I think that's going to be really exciting, and it's going to be transformational for you at home because you're going to see your children change, and you're going to start to be able to see them take advantage of advanced programming um, that's going to be world class. So I just think it's really exciting, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to design this with you. Okay, so as you can see, you've only got a little piece of the team that has put hours and tears and blood, sweat, a whole bit into this. Um, I'm hoping that you leave here excited, because we're excited. We are going on a new route. I hope you're excited, like, oh my gosh, which program do I want to try to put my child into? And yes, you'll be able to choose and rank those, because there's only certain seats. We never in our wildest imaginations expected to see the room in this school. I thought, oh, maybe we'll get about 20 people there. So this tells me that we're on the right track, and there's definitely interest. So, as you can see, we have a timeline up there. Registration opens today. So, you are here. We're going to give you a little QR code that you can actually do it right now. It's real easy if you want. The survey registration. Sorry. <laughs> Got a little ahead of myself. So, there's three more optional uh, information meetings just about full language at one at Asheville on the night, one at, uh, uh, well, there's one on the 10th at Alamo on the 17th, and I guess Harlem on the 10th. Then Prescape uh, April 1 registration will open officially for pre-K. We didn't come up with that date. That's set by the state. I apologize. I forgot to cover this earlier, um, but I don't want you to go through all this process. In order for your child to be in pre-K, they have to be four, turn four by September 1. If your child's birthday is September 2nd, they're not going to be able to enroll in the pre-K. They have to be four by September 1. And once again, that's not a Mistella Creek rule or a Goose Creek rule that's set by the state and the federal government. So I want to make sure if your child's going to be four on September 7th, I don't want you to go through all this and get really mad at the LA Okay. Um, also, if, if you know your those parents it says, you know, I, I know I'm not going to qualify, but I'm definitely interested in staying one of these programs. That's why we went ahead and opened that, and so we can go ahead and start doing those testing and get those things in place. So the plan for Goose Creek is to have notice of admittance by May 13th. That way, you know, if you need child care next year, you know if they're going, and that day is important to us because our transportation director, if y'all don't know Rick Walker's side, we can go ahead and say, you're a great man because we were begging him to, if we can get all the names together for him to be able to provide transportation for all three of these programs. I'm not guaranteeing that if you qualify, yes, you have transportation, but we really want to be able to offer that to the entire community. So that's our goal, and we will keep you posted on that part. Once again, here are the locations. I told you the most important, if you're going to take a picture, I would take a picture of this slide, even though it's my life. And I want to say, everything that you saw, we have a pre-K matters link on the website. Everything on here will be also on that pre-K matters. So if you can't see it good, do not worry about it. It's online. Once again, my name is uh, Susan Jackson, and the rest of the team is up here. If you have questions about Steve, Kevin, raise your hand. If you have questions about uh, getting in, qualifications, Araceli's here. Um, if you have questions on any of the programs for myself, uh, Christy and Karen Thomas can help you. Dual language, specifically Dr. Pilar, and also our other sidekick, Libby Callahan, will help you in anything that you've got. From that, we really want to thank you, and I hope that you leave here very excited about tonight because we're excited about next year. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Oh, if you didn't sign in, make sure you do so we have your email address, please.